Hey everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, my wife Melody and I are full-time resellers online. We sell on eBay, Poshmark, and Etsy. Today, I'm going to talk to you about five items that you can find that sell for a lot of money, sell quick, and oftentimes get overlooked at the sales. So if that interests you, stick around. Okay, so like I told you today, I'm going to go over five things that, uh, that you can find that oftentimes get overlooked. And so the reason that I want to cover this topic is it's one of the most common questions I get is, how in the world do you find these things? And the reality of it is, is that I look a lot. We spend a lot of time sourcing items, um, but we also look for a lot of different kinds of things. So let's talk about these things that I really think that uh, uh, you may not find them all, all the time, but if you open up uh, what you're looking for to include these kind of things, I think you'll be shocked at what some of them are. So one of the first categories is Christmas items. The first one I want to share with you, I sold last week. Now, uh, I'm filming this in July. It is in the middle of summer in Texas, so it's about as hot as it gets. Um, but uh, what I'm going to pop up on the screen right here is a uh, 1940s, 1950s aluminum Christmas tree. This one had a revolving base that played music. Uh, they vary a lot, but uh, what you're looking for on these are the ones with the palms at the end of it. Uh, in a perfect world, you find one that is also colored. The aluminum ones that are, are, you know, reds or greens or blues go for even more. This one sold in less than a week for $900 plus shipping. And so one of the greatest Christmas items you can find is like an aluminum Christmas tree. But that's not it. I'm going to, uh, I've got some of, uh, some Christmas ornaments behind me that I want to share with you and kind of what to look for. This little guy... It's part of a set that I picked up for a few dollars, and it is a uh, very thin glass. Uh, it's a very thin glass, very lightweight, very breakable, which is why they, um, why they don't, you don't see many of them out there. But a lot of times, if you find one, you could find a whole set, which is what I did. There were 12 of these. And I don't know if it will show. But this entire set came from Italy. Twelve of them in there. On that particular set, they're not all identical. Most of them are from a set with a little band, but there's a couple of others. Some of those ornaments could easily pass $100 a piece. And another item I want to show you is Christmas tree related. And the brand on this one is Noma. And it is a Christmas tree topper. Now, these aren't recommended with aluminum trees. You're not supposed to put anything electrical on aluminum trees because it's a good way to get yourself dead. Um, but when you find these kind of things, uh, this one is a little bit rough. The box is a little bit rough. It will still bring, I would say, at least $100, and it could sell for as much as $150. One in good shape with a good box could easily hit $150 to $175. So let's move on to the next category, which is also interesting. Uh, let's talk a little bit about vintage military, which... Of all the things that I'm going to talk about today, it's one of the ones I see the most. So let's talk just a little bit about that. One of the first ones I want to show you is, um, it's a navy deck jacket. And I picked this up at an estate sale, and I picked it up on a Sunday afternoon. It was the very end of the estate sale. And um, it has a tag in it that's an NSX number. And in my description below, I will put a way to date... Uh, exactly when these Navy deck jackets were released in, in the year. Very, very easy to do it, but I'll post some information in the description that'll help you do that. 
uh, one like this I ended up paying it was uh, regular price was eight dollars nobody bought it and um, so I actually the, it was a private estate sale the family was having it and, and this was people I knew I talked to them and explained to them that you know the jacket was probably something special but they just weren't interested in it so I ended up paying four bucks for it it sold within a few days and it sold right at 340 um, you're not going to see a lot of navy deck jackets you will see a lot of this jacket right here let me bring it a little closer for you this is an army field jacket and uh, this particular one's got a patch on the shoulder and and you will see those out. A lot of them are going to be M65s. Uh, you'll see those. Uh, those are from the Vietnam era. And what I'm going to do for you, also in the description, and maybe I can put a picture of it up here, um, but a way to date military jackets when you fi find them. Not just military jackets, but a lot of military items have a DSA or DLA number in them. Most of these will sell for $50 to $100. Uh, depending upon which jacket you have and exactly which conflict it, it was worn in, the price can vary quite a bit. But vintage military is something that you do see. I see a lot of military, uh, excuse me, I see a lot of the M65 jackets out there, and they all sell. One of the reasons I don't have more examples of all the things we're talking about today is as soon as I get them listed, if I've priced them appropriately, I sell them. They're gone. So, um... I'm going to show you what I pick up. <laughs> uh, some of the brands are obvious, like Carhartt and Lee and Levi's. And I'm not talking about denim. I'm talking about workwear. Farmwear, the stuff that they wore out when they were checking the fence line and, and those kind of things. I do have one I just picked up. This one happens to be a Carhartt, but I want you to notice on this one, the condition of it, that it is well-worn. It's got obvious holes in it. It's, it has obvious fading. So what happens with a lot of these, the jackets are thrashed. They're dirty. They've got oil on them. They, they caught on barbed wire or, you know, they wore it in the barn for years and years and years. Um, and they get worn out. These weren't worn for fashion. They were worn for work. And as a result, they, they, just, they just really take a beating. But that increases the value. This one, I was at a garage sale uh, this last weekend. And they have a lot of stuff out there. In fact, I bought a newer Carhartt from them that won't bring as much money. But on this one, I just asked him, hey, what about that jacket hanging there? And she was like, you want that, that one? And I was like, yeah, I really do. It's old. It's made in the USA. And, and so she finally was like, you can have it for five bucks. And uh, so one like that, probably $75 to $100. Uh, the blanket lining helps. They are worn for fashion now, but that is not, uh, the natural distressing on those goes a long way. Uh, I'm going to put a picture up right here of a pair of overalls that I picked up for a quarter. And um, they were very old. They could not have been worn out more than they were. And uh, these sold for right at 100 These sold to a studio who was doing a costuming for a movie coming up. And so I don't, I don't know if it was a horror film or what it was. But uh, when you see these kind of things, don't pass them up. A lot of times the price plummets because people are thinking that the condition has run them down. But if you're looking at old workwear, condition is not an issue. Um, the old workwear leads right into the vintage denim that I want to talk to you about. I think most people know to pick up, you know, an old pair of, of Levi's with uh, the Big E. I, I think most of you know what that is. I want to talk about the, the, the denim that was also used at work. Um, definitely falls into the denim category and not the vintage jacket or overalls or things like that. So let me grab a piece and show you what I'm talking about. This, this is an old Wrangler Pearl Snap shirt. You've seen a hundred of them, but I want you to look at this one. This one has pieces on it that have been repaired. It has pieces where they have put patches on it. I love it that they attached a pencil holder on it. 
they repaired part here where they just replaced some of the denim. There are places on the back where they have put patches on it and uh, I, do, I don't think I paid a dollar for it, but it should bring 70. Um, maybe a little more. I'll put up a picture right here of a jacket, a jacket, uh, of a, a denim pearl snap shirt that I just sold this last week, $70. Same thing, it's worn, it's got all kinds of uh, hickeys and problems on it that uh, it, just, it just raises the value, it doesn't lower it. So uh, vintage denim is awesome. It's not just the shirts. Uh, this was a pair of, of uh, vintage shorts I picked up, and they were trashed. There was almost nothing left of them. Uh, it doesn't show very well in the photos, but the entire crotch area had been repaired. There was It was the X-Lex patch for me that did it. Um, the back end was blown completely out, and these sold uh, for... Um, my memory fades, but either 60 or $75, but in about 15 minutes. And uh, again, I paid virtually nothing for them because of the condition of them. And so don't, when you're looking at the vintage denim, don't just focus on those high-end brands. Uh, you will see things like, like here's a pair of Levi's, they're bell bottoms, but look at, look at the patches on these. They're glorious. It isn't, uh, they were orange tab, but they weren't big E. And without any of the work done on them, I'm probably going to get 50 or $75 for them. But because of all the amazing stuff, these go for 120 and they sell within a week. And so um, these are items you can find because people leave them because of the condition. The, the, the last of the five items that I want to talk about is, is something that you have to use your imagination a little bit, um, but you'll see what I'm talking about. I have back here on the camera a candy striper outfit, and I will, instead of me trying to walk you around that, I will put up a, a video showing it right here. A lot of these were uniforms. They were real things that were actually used by people in the day. This came from the Goodwill bins. I was there one day, and they brought out 20 or 25 pounds of vintage uh, candy striper outfits and nobody else wanted them. And so the whole 20 pounds at $1.50 a pound cost me about $35. I have, um, I don't list them all at once, uh, although I only have two left. This is one of the last two, but I have averaged $100 a piece. Now, and think about it. For people that are wanting a costume for Halloween or for set producers, I, I actually sell quite a bit to to Hollywood and to music producers and people like that. But you have the option of buying a candy striper outfit. But if you buy a new costume, it's 50 to 100 bucks and they're junk. If you buy this, this was made to be washed and worn and washed and worn and 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 it's it's real. So you're not trying to make it look real. It is real and it sells for not much more than a, a halfway decent costume. So one of the other things to think about with costumes is that, um, um, and I see these quite a bit, this one is a drum majorette outfit. And with uh, the drum majorette outfits, uh, you, you will see them. And don't discount cheerleading outfits. The only issue you're going to have with these and cheerleading outfits is a lot of times they're made for smaller girls. You know, they were made for high school girls or junior high girls, so finding ones in you know an adult small or bigger can be a little bit difficult but when you do uh, just regular cheerleading outfits I get 30 to 40 dollars all day long for about as fast as you can list them and not just at Halloween they sell all the time and the drum majorettes bring a little bit more especially if you have the hat and things like that that go with them so you know these five items when you're talking about vintage Christmas um, of the ones that I've mentioned it may be the hardest to find but it also has enormous returns when you do. Um, and the, the vintage military, I see a lot. I see those field jackets just about everywhere. And uh, the, the Carhartt jackets and, you know, uh, Hercules is another brand. I'll put a Hercules up here. And it's a crossover because it's, it's not just a workwear jacket um, um, because it falls into the denim category. But Hercules is an old Sears brand. That goes for very high dollars. Uh, this one sold for 170, 
and um, like I say, crosses over into denim. There, there is some overlap there. With the denim, start looking at the stuff that is just worn out. That may be the best find of the day. And uh, with the vintage costumes, I'm not talking about commercially made costumes. I'm talking about looking for uh, old football uniforms, old cheerleading outfits, candy striper outfits. Um, you have to be very careful with police uniforms and things like that. But, but pay attention to work uniforms that now serve as costumes. Um, and the return on those is very high. And people saved those things and they think that they don't have a lot of value. So every time I've ever found them, I didn't have to pay much for them. So um, that was it. Five items that you can find and pick up and sell today. So I appreciate you tuning in. It, it means a lot to me that you're here. If you haven't done so already, uh, subscribe to the channel and, and give me a thumbs up. And that's it. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks.